Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we are going to be creating a Metroid style camera where we can switch from room to room. Once we pass the borders of the view, we can go up and down, left and right. Now, I saw this question on Reddit and I thought I would give it a try. I'm sure it's been solved by now. But I just wanted to share the um, what I came up with using kind of my own method here. I'm not sure if it's the answer that was given or not, but uh, this is the one that I came up with. So let's roll the intro and let's actually start coding and talk about the theory here. Okay, so the theory behind this sliding camera, and I have this Metroid graphic here because in Metroid, once you reach the uh, door here and you go through the door, the camera pans over. The theory is, is, is we have a room in Game Maker Studio, and this room can be a, a big room or a large room, but what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into certain segments, and in this case, I'm using four segments. The only real rule is the segments need to be the same size. So in this case, I have four different segments, room one, two, three, and four. And then the next step, what we need to do is enable our viewports to cover up a a single segment. So in this case, we're going to be covering up rule no, room number one. You can see in the box here, we have room number one. And once our player uh, reaches the end of the viewport, we're gonna switch over to the next room. So in this case, it would be room number two. So that's the theory. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're gonna switch over to Game Maker Studio. And we're gonna put this theory into use. So you can see here that we have a basic Game Maker Studio. Uh, project here. I have some objects I've already created and inside the room I don't have anything. So this is kind of the default settings here. You can see my room is, is 1024 by 768 and I'm actually going to make this a lot smaller because the way that I've done my sprites is if I look at my sprite here my sprites are only 256 wide by 192 in height. So a room like that would have more than the segments that I've created here. So my room is actually going to be 512 pixels by 384. So you can see it's kind of made it pretty small here. Now the next step we said would was to create a view port. Before that, let's actually add the assets in here. So I'm gonna drag sprite uh, room number one there. I'm gonna drag two and three and then finally four. So these I'm just using as a background images. And what I'm going to do is underneath my room settings here, if I scroll down, I'm gonna to go to viewports and cameras. I'm going to enable viewports and make sure the background gets cleared. And then in viewpoint viewport zero, I'm going to enable it. So currently you can see it's a massive window right here. We need to go into the camera properties and we need to make this size the same size as one of our segments here. So our width is 256, and then our height is 192. Now you can see that we are just covering up room number one. Underneath that, we have viewport properties, and this is the width and height of the actual window. And I'm not gonna touch any of that. So what we're going to be doing is moving this X position and this Y position, depending on whatever the player is on, to the certain segment in the room. So you can see that we are switching here and we can go to room four. Okay, so we'll set it back to room number one. And I have this level layout, which I'm just going to unhide. And you can see that we have just some level in here. In instances, I'm going to drag in my player object. And this player is a basic platformer guy. There's nothing really to him. He can move left and right and jump. Then we have this camera object. And the camera object, all it has right now is a variable uh, for the target. So we can uncheck this and let's go and assign it to our object player. So let's close the room and actually load up the camera. So if you're unfamiliar with the variable definitions, all I've done there is I've created a variable called target. I set it as resource and I just said we can only accept objects. And that was allowing me to select the player object there. So if I come in here, you can see we have a create event, we have a step event, and they are both currently empty. So in the create event, we're going to need a few different variables to help us with our code. First, we need a quick way to access the camera. So we could say camera equals view camera, like it's spelled camera, view camera zero. So this is actually going to refer 
to underneath here the viewports so we are using viewport 0 and that's why we have view camera 0 so this is just going to be a quick way to access that viewport next we need the current width and the current height of that viewport now I'm not going to put in arbitrary numbers because if we go away or we don't work on this project for a couple of weeks or even a couple of days, if your memory is as bad as mine, when you come back, you're like, oh man, why did I put in 256 or, you know, why is the height 37? I have no idea what that means. So we're going to use the camera functions to get the width and height. So we could say view underscore width equals camera, camera, get view width and then we pass in the camera variable and we're going to say view height it's going to be the same thing get view height and pass in the camera so now that we have the width and the height we need to know the current x and y position of the viewport so the same thing we could use view x equals camera get view x pass in the camera and view y equals camera get view camera and pass in that variable. So now we have the width and height and we have the X and Y position. Now, I thought the simplest way to do this would to be use two variables to keep track of which segment we are on the X position and which segment we are on the Y position. So let's create two variables here. We'll call them segment X equals one and segment Y equals one. I'm not make sure I spelled them the same here. So now that we can keep track of which segment we are currently on. Okay, so now that we've done all of the variables, let's go over to the step event and let's actually write some code. So the first thing we're gonna handle is we're gonna handle the left and right, which is a horizontal, horizontal, and end region. My spelling's getting worse. Okay, so in here, we need to know the left border and the right border. So we need to know where this left position is and then where the right border is. So if our player passes the right border, we can move this over one. If our player passes the left border, we can move it back one. So in here, we'll create two variables. We'll call it left and so border. And this is going to be our view X because we know wherever this starts, this is gonna be our border. Now what we have to do is say, okay, from the start, I want to know what the next border is going to be. And this is where we can use those segments. So we could say border, sorry, right border equals, and in there, we're going to say the view width. So in our case, it's going to be 255 plus, and we're going to say, once again, the view width times, and we'll say segment X minus one. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is a little difficult to understand. And you're right, it might be, but let me explain it here. So we are taking the view width, and that, let's actually code this out here. So let's say our view width is 256 plus 256 times the current segment minus one. So what we would end up with is 256 plus 256 times zero, which would which would come out to 256. If we move over one segment, then we would end up with 256 plus 256, which would give us our, our next view position of 512. So all we're doing is we're saying, okay, if we're here and the segment we're on is one, we wanna take one away from it because, because we're working, technically we're starting at zero, and we're going to figure out where the right border is. So 256 times, or plus 256 times zero is going to be 256. And then one would put us over here. And then three would put us somewhere over here. So we just keep going. And this would actually continue on. You wouldn't have to change any of it. And we're just using this segment underscore X minus one to get that zero position, that initial position that we needed. Okay, so hopefully you could understand that and we're going to write an if statement which is going to be extremely simple we're just going to say if the target dot x is bigger than our right border well then all we want to do is add one to our segment x else if the target dot x is less than the left border then we want to take away one from our x position now that we've done that, let's copy this and do the horizontal, or sorry, the vertical, because it is very much the same. All we need to do is we need to, instead of saying a left border, we're going to say top border and bottom border. 
And because we're dealing with y, we need to say the view underscore y and the view height and change this to segment y. And now we could say if the target y position is bigger than the bottom border, then add one. If the target y position is less than the top border, then take away one. The final thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move our camera around. So we could use a function called camera set view position and we pass in the camera variable and then we pass in two x and y coordinates. So we say the view underscore width times whatever segment we are on minus one. And we'll do the same with the height times and segment underscore y minus one. And let's make sure that goes away. Okay, so we don't have any syntax errors. The final thing that we have to do and then we are all done is because we are using these in our calculations, we have to make sure that we update these whenever we change the camera. So for now, I'm just gonna throw them in here. So I'm gonna say view x equals camera get view x and then the camera for the y position. Now that we have all that done, and I think our room is set up, I'm just gonna double check that I assigned the player, and I did. If I hit a five, let's see if we can get this running. So now we have our first room. If I move to the right, we have room two. If I move to the left, room one. And if I go down this hole, we should set on room three and then room four. And I can go back up. There we go. So it's working 100%. Um, the only thing I would probably do is um, I would probably lerp between the positions here. So what you could do or you could try it here is this segment is where we're moving the actual view. So you might have a current view X and a current view Y and just have that lerp between the final destination for X and Y. But yeah, you can see this is pretty much the entire code that we needed to make that happen. If I were to mess up my room here, and I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take away this wall here, and I will actually drag it down and just, I'll put it all the way across here. If I were to do this, and let's move, also add in some stuff here so we can see what we're doing, room four, room three, if I hit F5, so currently this is set up so we could just continuously keep going. And then I could come back. And if I fall down, there's room three. So you can see that hopefully this will give you a number of different rooms that you can go to. You can see that you could set your game up a whole bunch of different ways. So as long as you have the border there, I'm not going to fall down to my death. death. But um, yeah. Uh, it's pretty easy so that's my solution i came up with uh, hopefully i didn't bore you and yeah i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching